Unquation Spencer, Robert S. Blank, Presidential Associate Professor of Philosophy here in the Philosophy Department at Penn. I was born in Gardena, California, which is right next to Compton. And I guess the place where I matured was Nashville, Tennessee. After California, we actually moved to Warren, Ohio. And that's where I really developed a love of biology. Um, I really loved going out to the creek and getting like snapping turtles and all these strange uh, reptiles and amphibians typically. Freaked out my mother, but yeah, <laughs> you know, that's the love of science, how it starts. I grew up in a family of three other siblings. It was mostly my siblings and my mother. My father lived elsewhere. And so we were low income. We lived in publicly subsidized housing for most of my childhood. And there wasn't much by way of uh, making it out academically because the school systems were dilapidated in the part of Nashville that we live, which is uh, East Nashville. But there was a way out that I later learned was the creation of the desegregation plan of Nashville, the creation of two academic magnet schools, Hume Fogg and Martin Luther King in North Nashville. So, you know, I test out, I get in, and the whole title is Martin Luther King Jr. Academic Magnet High School for the Health Sciences and Engineering. And uh, so my AP Bio teacher, she saw that I had some interest and in, uh, abilities in biology, uh, but I didn't have the resources. So she hooked me up with somebody at Meharry Medical College, which is a historically black college university in Nashville, one of the main medical HBCUs in the country. And so that's where I met Samuel Dunya, the chair of the Department of Biochemistry. And that was just life changing because, I mean, for one, the life of an academic just seemed really appealing in the way that Dunya sort of laid it out. It was a very different experience because it was so relaxed, but yet they still got stuff done. So I remember first listening to the entire Life After Death album from Biggie Smalls in that laboratory, and yet everyone in that laboratory did extraordinarily well in the research. So that year I took home first prize in biochemistry in the state, and it was just a very seductive experience. So after that I said I knew I wanted to be a professor. I thought I wanted to be a professor in biochemistry. I actually wasn't advised to apply to any Ivy League schools, even though my GPA was near perfect because my SAT scores weren't uh, at the level at which they thought that it would need to be in order to thrive in one of those schools. Uh, so I apply anyway, and, <laughs> and I get in uh, to Cornell. That was my first choice. And I was on a pre-med track. And later on, probably around sophomore year, I picked up philosophy, not for any particularly deep reason, set in on this ancient philosophy course and it just blew my mind away. <laughs> I was like, yo, I want to take some of these courses. This is really interesting. And I take more. It's like, look, I might as well you know, major in this. this. This looks really interesting. Maybe it can help me be a better scientist, right? But I was still on the pre-med track, took the MCATs. Everything was going well. And then I ran into Richard Boyd, who unfortunately just passed away this year. But he taught this course on uh, knowledge and objectivity in science. So uh, in the course, we read the bell curve and it, you know, had a hypothesis for, you know, why different groups of people perform differently on certain tests of ability. But Boyd asked sort of a metaphysical question. Um, he said, look, if you're going to do research on these races, this racial scheme, are these even natural classifications to be doing science with, at least biological science? And that question just stuck with me. I said, that's a really good question. Like you could be doing a whole string of science based on a flawed metaphysical assumption, <laughs> right? Uh, somebody needs to work on this. I'm interested in it. I'll work on it. So that was, at the end of that course, was when I changed my career trajectory. And I said, hey, I'll check out this philosophy of science stuff. I went to graduate school. I uh, got a master's in philosophy at Tufts. I then went to Stanford for my graduate work in philosophy. But in order to write the dissertation I wanted to write, which was about basically whether race is a legitimate biological kind, 
I need to learn some more biology. So, so I picked up a master's in biology at Stanford and worked with some philosophically minded uh, evolutionary biologists and put it all together with my dissertation in the philosophy department. And then I was off to the races. It was like, well, I'm in it now. <laughs> you know? There's a plethora of issues still left to deal with. And um, I'm not done yet. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out uh, answers to some of the ancillary questions related to uh, the issues that originally got me interested in this. So once we get to a point where there's something that looks like equal opportunity in our country, then I'll be done. Yeah. <laughs>